Hi there everyone, it's Alex. Welcome back to another Drummer Artistic for Studios. Today we're going to be making a sci-fi prop by modifying a Nerf gun. So since the early 2000s when Hasbro came out with the Nerf Instrike series, it has been very popular for cosplayers of all sorts to take Nerf guns and modify them to fit whatever particular costume they're working on. Now, it hasn't just been cosplayers that have been taking these things and modifying them. There's actually been a rather large development in Hollywood and the TV industry of taking Nerf guns and modding them to make them into whatever particular weapon they want to use for their show or movie. Uh, big examples of it, is the there was a show called Terra Nova. Pretty much every single one of the weapons they used in that show was a modified Nerf gun. In Doctor Who, the first episode where you meet River Song, Silence of the Library, the weapon that she's actually using in that is a modified Nerf in-strike scout blaster. There's numerous other examples all over the place. It's very easy for prop departments to take these cool sci-fi looking toy guns that cost them maybe 20, 30 bucks if they're buying them brand new and then modifying them to look like they live in the world that they're creating for that particular show or film. Disney and Marvel are not an exception to that rule of studios modifying Nerf guns. Specifically in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, they used at least two Nerf guns for Ravager blasters. They are the two that Rocket picks up when they escape from the prison. So both blasters that he picked up were modified Nerf guns. I'm specifically going to be working on the one that they referred to as Katie in the visual encyclopedia for Marvel. And it's modified off of this. It's one of the earlier in-strike guns, but they've re-released it multiple times. It's still available today. It's a simple single shot blaster that has a little flashlight on the front of it. Okay, so I started this build by doing some research and I found some good reference images of the prop. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to find any just display images of the prop gun the way I was from Mural Nair and a bunch of the other ones. But these are pretty good reference images and other than this one, these are all directly from the film. And you can see right here, it is clearly this gun. Now, to find the parts that go on it, I could have simply done what some people would do, is build all the extra parts on it out of plumbing parts and things like that. But I went and checked on the replica prop form, or RPF, and Back when the movie first came out, there was an entire thread dedicated to these two blasters. And through that, the people there spend hours combing through websites to find where parts come from for movie props. And they discovered the barrel extension was a airsoft barrel extension they found out that the scope is actually also a airsoft tactical flashlight. And they discovered the two extra barrels on the front were actually the plunger assemblies from a Nerf Maverick. So I have pretty much all the individual parts I need to assemble a nearly screen accurate replica of this gun. The first step in this process is of course going to be to disassemble the gun. I have to decide which parts I'm going to reuse, which parts need to get sanded, and then which parts I can just completely discard. So I have all the parts of the blaster sanded and pretty much ready for paint. But before I can paint it, I have to make the discs that will cover up the Nerf logo. So to do that, I'm going to be using an eighth inch thick sheet of styrene plastic. It's a good thermoplastic that cuts very easily. I can score it with a box cutter or a razor knife and then it snaps. So I'm going to measure what I need this disc to be. And it needs to be just over 
one and a quarter inches. So I've got a compass. Which that should do it. And now, got my two circles. I've now got my two individual pieces and I'm going to go over and cut them with the jeweler saw to get them cut out. Okay, so I've got my discs cut. We'll go right on top of the logos like that and then it will be pretty much ready for me to start priming everything. So I've gone and scratched up the surface with some sandpaper, so that way the glue has something to grip to. And to put these on, I'm just gonna use some hot glue. So those are in place. So I'm pretty much now ready to do the first coat of priming on most of the parts. After I get the first coat of priming done, I'm going to assemble the blaster, and that's when I'm going to build the plates that will hold these components onto the front. And then that will get, I'll assemble the plate and everything, put it together, and then hit it with another coat of primer to kind of seal everything together as a single gun. I might do another light coat of sanding in between those, but let's get these things primed. Okay, so for priming a lot of the smaller parts, being the things like this or this, I've taken a page from Bill over at Punished Props, and I have a two by four that I've drilled a series of holes in and a bunch of bamboo skewers. And what I will be able to do is slide the part onto the end of the skewer, paint it, and then set it into the board so it can dry like that. It's gonna make the process go a lot quicker and manage to get everything painted in one go so I don't have to paint and then flip over. So I'm starting the priming with just a sandable primer from Rust-Oleum, just a nice simple gray. Doesn't have to be anything elaborate. So here are the pieces primed and not assembled, but laid out so you can see what it would look like. The next step I'm going to take is I have to build the plate that will go right on the front of the blaster to attach these onto it. So I'm going to use my plastic, cut out a panel that will go on here and on the inside here to cover up that opening. Get these attached in, I'll prime it before I glue it on so I don't have to do the extra gluing and stuff. So, I now have those two cylinders attached onto my plate. I used a combination of super glue and hot glue to get them attached on here. And now I'm gonna use hot glue just to attach that plate right onto the front there and then mounting that will be done. I have to still insert these into each of the cylinders. They don't go all the way in, they protrude just slightly. So what I'll do is I'll actually fill the groove here with some hot glue and then push it in and stop it about right there because that's about where it needs to be. I'm not being too careful because I know I can trim it back if it overfills slightly. 
And then I can come back in and just put some super glue down under those tabs to hold that in if I wanted. So. And those are pretty much in place per the image. So like I said, next is going to be to figure out the barrel. I also have a small piece of EVA foam I've cut. It's got a 45 degree angle on it. This I'm going to get glued on to the back here. You can see it's a little bit too thick. This is a four millimeter piece of foam. It's only needing about two millimeter but I'm gonna glue this on in place, cut around it, and then flush it off because this is supposed to be smooth. So that's what I'm gonna to use to finish off that. I have wrapped the end of this in some hockey grip tape, and that's just to fill the space up inside of here when I insert it. I cut the threading off so this sits flush with the end I cut off on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some hot glue on here, push it in, squeeze it, and then I'm gonna fill the gap up top with more hot glue to hold it in place. most crucial part here is making sure the barrel is straight as that first set of glue dries. And now the barrel is attached. I have my foam on the back. There's a, maybe a little bit more cleanup I'm going to manage to do. But that's on there. Pretty much the only thing that is left that is an addition onto the gun, it's gonna be the scope. Now, because I plan on finishing this all with a fairly matte smooth paint, I am not going to bother doing anything to the scope because I'm gonna be finishing it with a black and then going over it with some silvers and highlights and everything so I can do that to the scope once I get everything else painted. So it's pretty much ready for me to hit it with my paint. So for the paint job, I am using a new product to me. I'm going to be trying most of this to use a Plaid FX cosplay paint. I'm going to use the smooth satin black to give a nice complete black coating to the entire blaster before I do anything else. It does have a bunch of highlights of silvers and even some golds in here. So I've got both the armor metallics in a silver and a gunmetal black. And then I have the armor metallic of a gold. And those I will use for all the highlights. To try and avoid brush strokes as much as possible, I'm using a sponge brush. If I had an airbrush, I would consider airbrushing this stuff on. Now that I have my base coat of black done, I can go back in with my different silvers and the golds and hit all the other areas that need to get painted. I have to do the multiple coats to get it to actually cover everything and have the black not show through. So there you have it. We took a Nerf gun and some airsoft accessories and managed to make a near screen accurate replica of a blaster from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. There's all sorts of ways that you can modify these Nerf guns or other toy guns 
to fit whatever particular cosplay or fandom you are working with. If you have any suggestions for other props you'd like to see me make, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm always looking for suggestions of things to try making. And if you liked this, please uh, consider clicking the subscribe button and following along with the other videos as I put them out. I'm Alex. This has been Drum Artists of our Studios. See you next time. Thank you.